I'm gonna get shot or stabbed for doing this video, so whatever. I'm just gonna, I'm just embracing it, embracing my fate. All right, hey guys, this is AJ Unlimited here to bring you another video. So, yeah, <laughs> the title of this video is probably gonna piss a lot of people off, uh, men and women across the board, but I don't even care because I have something to say. Actually, a, a few something things to say. I'm just going to kind of lay it all out there on the table for you all, who I am and where I'm coming from, because this isn't, the title of this video isn't what you think. Um, and I'm not going to beat around the bush. It is what it is. I don't really care. I'm just going to go for it. So I'm a 27 year old male. I live alone. I work full time. And, uh, and I'm a Catholic, you know, Catholic, conservative, Republican, all the whole nine yards, far right stuff, I guess. I'm a virgin. I've never had a girlfriend, never had a first kiss, never, obviously I don't have any kids, none of that. So I'm pretty much as dry as you can get as far as relationships or romanticness goes. Did I mention I'm single? One day I do want to meet a girl, good, you know, good Catholic, conservative girl, and, you know, and fall in love and get married and have kids and do the Catholic thing. Uh, with all that being said, in my 25 years, 20, geez, Louise, 27 years of living, I have been through a lot of unnecessary heartbreak and just confusion and frustration and rejection and abandonment. I don't know if that's an appropriate word to use, but I'll just say it anyway because it's kind of true. So I'm kind of using this video as an opportunity to just let it all out because, and I say this very broadly and very loosely, women are jerks. There was a girl when I was a junior in high school, there was a girl that I like had a crush on. She was actually a freshman when I was a junior. I know it sounds weird, sounds creepy, but it is what it is. I don't I don't, I'm not sorry. I had a crush on her and, um, after, I don't know, a few months of this going on and she f found out about it, she broke my heart, told me, sorry, like actually her best friend at the time had a crush on me, which was stupid. Cause okay. Her best friend was like, she got all right, but not like my type. And so this girl, obviously I'm not going to say any names, but this girl told me, she didn't even tell me she, she didn't like me or she didn't want to date me. She said she can't date me. Uh, and I, I, I figured the subtext was because her best friend has a crush on me. So whatever. It's, it was a long time ago. It's water under the bridge. So many years later, I actually ran into her at the mall where she at the time worked. And this is like, I don't know how long ago at this, at this point in time it was. But I ran into her and um, we had lunch. And, uh, she seemed, she's like the way she was talking to me and her overall body language made it seem like maybe there's a chance here. Maybe I was patient and I was being a good boy and, uh, maybe I, I won her over after all these years. And she was kind of like, I wouldn't say flirting, but definitely giving off certain signals until she mentioned her boyfriend. <laughs> And I was like, this is stupid. Why am I doing this? This is stupid. We were eating Chinese at the mall. And I paid for it because that's what a man does. And like about halfway through the meal, I wasn't even hardly eating because I didn't have an appetite because I was like nervous, you know, whatever. But she was she was like scarfing it down because I guess she just got off of work and she was hungry. So I'm glad I made her happy. But one thing led to another. And I was like, all right, I'll just finish this stupid meal at home alone which was at my mom's house at the time. And uh, I just remember the walk of shame, like walking to my car after that into the parking lot. And that was like the first of many walks of shames. There were a few other occasions where similar things would happen where whether it be at school or at certain jobs that I would have, that there would be girls that I would be into and I would kind of like, you know, show interest. I would flirt with them. I would kind of chase after them. And sometimes they would show, like, kind of sort of mutual, like, feelings. Sometimes they wouldn't. And the girls that would show, like, some kind of mutual interest, I would kind of, like, really pursue. And then I would find, find out, I'd fall flat on my face and find out that they weren't into me at all. And that's a terrible, terrible feeling. Now, I'm going to kind of get real deep and personal 
with the internet right now because I'm going to tell you a story that happened to me. I'm not going to tell you the job I had. I'm not going to tell you the girl. I'm not going to even tell you, like, the 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 time of, of year it was because I don't, if she does stumble, happen to stumble upon this video, I don't want her to know that it was her. But I, and this, is, this was the nail in the coffin for me as far as women go, by the way, because this was, like, the heartbreak of heartbreaks. Uh, not that it was that big of a deal. I don't know. I'm just going to get right into it. So I was working this job and there was a girl that worked there, right? And I had a crush on her and she knew it because I tried to make plenty of moves and I tried asking her out like multiple times and she knew it. She knew I liked her. She knew I was trying to get with her. I was trying to, I was trying to, you know, you know, form a relationship with her and she did that thing where she kept on giving me mixed signals. One day I was there and she was kind of like really into me, trying, you know, talking to me and, get, you know, being real bubbly. And the next day she was like, she wanted nothing to do with me. And so I just kind of went with it, whatever, cool, whatever, yeah, no big deal. And it just built and built and built and built. And she actually was kind of going away to college every few months. So she would like for a few months, she would be there for a few months. She wouldn't be there. So it was just kind of like a constant, like the pot was just constantly stirring with this particular female. But there was one day where she was helping me out with my job and I thought, huh, like she knows I like her. Why is she helping me out? Maybe she's trying to be nice. Maybe she's trying to be friendly. Okay, cool. But she was like just almost, almost being a little bit too friendly and I took this as if I don't make a move now, it'll probably never gonna. It's probably never gonna happen. It's probably too late. It'll probably be. It'll probably, you know, just go pass me by, right? You know, it'll be if I. It's now or never, pretty much. So I approached her. I told her I had feelings for her, and she just walked away. She didn't say a word. She just walked away, and I just stood there, like in just the most unexpected like rejection like despair I can't even describe how I felt after that and I had to still keep working with her and stuff and it was never really resolved I never really got much closure on that but it was one of those things where it just crushed me and I just had to deal with it for a little while until she went back to college and uh Long story short, it traumatized me because it was like, it, I mean, word spreads, especially in like, I don't know, like when you're, when you're working with a bunch of college kids, word, word spreads like wildfire. So I knew immediately everybody's going to find out, everybody's going to know. So suddenly I was like the, the, the weird guy at work, the, 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 the just the, the guy that like the, that everybody tried to stay away from because they thought I was a freak. So fast forward to the job that I have now, cause there were... <laughs> A few women here and there and kind of like in between, I, you know, and there were a couple of instances like even before my current job and such, you know, because uh, I spend a lot of time on Tinder. I'm not going to lie. I do it like almost every day. I'm on Tinder. And there was actually one girl that I we matched and we were getting along pretty well. We exchanged phone numbers. We were texting and we were just, we were, we were, we, everything was going great. We were becoming friends. And I was like, hey, when are we going to hang out, you know? And one day she just literally, without any warning or any rhyme or reason, she just stopped responding to me completely. She stopped texting me back. She, you know, was still watching like my Snapchat stories, but I didn't care about that. I was just thinking, why aren't you texting me back? And it literally came out of nowhere. One day... We were hitting it off. We were <coughs> we were really getting along. And the next day, she just completely, totally just ditched me out of nowhere. Similar thing happened with the job that I have now. When I first started working there, there was a girl that was around my age. And I thought she was pretty cute, you know. So I kind of, kind of started talking to her. And we started talking on Snapchat. And, uh, you know, I gave her my number over Snapchat. Because I'm like, hey, if, you know, like, I don't want to talk on Snapchat because it's like, you know, I just want to, if you, if we're going to be like friends talking like that, I just want to, you know, just text me, whatever. And she never like added, she never like put, stored my number. And, uh, eventually she just stopped showing up to work and she stopped talking to me. She stopped responding to my messages 
And it was stupid, too, because he was, like, commenting on a lot of my Instagram posts, like, not that I, I don't post super often, but when I, when we followed each other on Instagram, she was, like, commenting on some of my, like, you know, two-year-old posts, saying, like, oh, you look so adorable, this and that, like, with my niece, you know, she's sitting in my lap, and uh, she was really coming on to me, and I was, I was like, okay, let's do it. And when she just stopped showing up to work, she stopped responding to me. She stopped responding to all my messages, the whole nine yards. So fast forward another year or so, another girl started to work where I was working. And, you know, when I first, like the first time I saw her, I was like, oh, wow, she's pretty cute, you know, whatever. But I didn't like, at this point, I'm already like over it. So I wasn't even going to go up to her and talk to her. I was going to kind of just let her come to me. And she did. She started talking to me. And we started becoming really good friends, and I started giving her rides to work because she didn't drive. I was like, you know, it was cool. She was, she seemed really cool. I'd pick her up, I'd bring her to my condo, and nothing happened. You know, I don't get any ideas, but we'd get food, and we'd get some alcohol, and we would, we would just hang out. And the first time that happened, it was actually really fun. We were, we were getting along pretty well. But she was friend-zoning me, like, kind of, kind of like crazy. Like, I kept on making it clear to her, like, I want to be more than friends. I'm interested in you. I like you. I want to take you out on a date. Like, I, I told her multiple times, two or three times, like, I'm, I'm like, interested in you. Like, yeah, I just want to be friends, this and that. But I was hanging out with her anyway, and I was like, oh, who knows? Maybe I'll win her over, right? The second time we hung out at my condo, she was sitting at my kitchen table. I was sitting down with her. We were just eating food. She said to my face that, oh, yeah, I'm thinking about getting back into dating again. I think I'm going to re-download Tinder. And... I mean, maybe, maybe I was, I, I took it the wrong way. Maybe I was misinterpreting things, but why on earth would you tell me that after I had made it clear that I'm like interested in you? Like I'm, I'm interested. I'm, I want to, you know, yeah, she friends on me. I get that, but don't. At my at my my condo, when you're eating the food that I bought you and drinking the drinks that I I bought for you, you don't tell me that to my face at my own kitchen table. Like, I'm not saying that all men are saints. Obviously, many of us, most of us, are douchebags and selfish, and we just only want sex or whatever. But some of us are actually really good, and we care about you, and we want to actually treat you right. And then you do that to us. And it's just, like, I try, I'm honestly, truly trying to understand and trying to be open-minded about it and trying to figure out where I went wrong or how I might have misinterpreted things. I mean, she clearly friends on me. I get it. But I was like, yeah, you know, never give up, right? You know, who knows? Maybe I'll win her over. That was my mindset. And just the sheer, like, just the sheer feeling of disrespect that I felt when she said that to my face in my condo, like, I just, whatever, it doesn't matter, it could have been in my car, it could have been at a restaurant, I'm just saying, it just felt like, um, every, all these nice things that I did for her, they, um, didn't translate, and she just kind of spit in my face, if the roles were reversed, and I was in her position, her shoes, and some girl was trying to make it clear to me that she's into me, she wants to take me on a date, she wants to be more than friends, and I tried friend zoning her, I would never in a million years accept food and alcohol and like, you know, take me to, you know, take me to her place and, you know, light some candles, you know, whatever. There was one candle I lit, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I think if I would read down like Tinder again, back into dating again, cause you're not good enough for me. I don't like you. You're just, a, you're just, a, you're just a friend. And we actually haven't really spoken since then. We kind of just, I kind of cut her off just because I could just tell that we weren't on the same page and this and that and the other. And it was just, it's just let bygones be bygones, right? This is kind of, I feel how women treat men in general. And that is, you know, one day they pretend like they're all over you and they just, they just like, they want you and they're attracted to you and they're flirting with you. And the next day they pretend you're invisible and they want nothing to do with you and you don't even exist. And you, they just, you're just insignificant to them. That's just kind of why I'm making this video because I want some clarity here. I want answers, you know, especially when it comes to 
the girls that just stopped responding to me randomly without any kind of explanation or warning or anything like that. Those are the women that I really, really just want just why? Like, I would rather you just tell me no, straight up no, I'm not into you, this and that and the other. I'd be like, okay, cool, no problem. I'll leave you alone. It's frustrating, man. And I'm tired of the games. I'm tired of the nonsense. I'm tired of women giving mixed signals. And again, I'm just, I know men do it too. I'm just saying from my own perspective, for my own behalf, I try to be very, very clear and very um, honest and genuine about my intentions. And a lot of these women just don't do that. Honestly, I'm going to just put it out there right now as a 27 year old single male ladies if you're into a guy i think we've reached a point in society and in, in the rules of society and the rules of dating where women should sack up and talk to men talk to these guys that they're into because i'm going to tell you right now the ones like myself and the ones that actually have a good head on their shoulders and know what they want and not just looking for sex but actually like genuine you know, a genuine relationship, like, go talk to him. I'm tired of the games. I know everybody is. I'm tired of the mixed signals. I'm tired of the confusion, the frustration, the, the, just, the, like, what, why, what, what is it? Why? What, why did she do that? Why'd she say that? What is it? You know, I'm honestly, I, you know, I'm going to say, I'm tired of talking on the phone with my buddy for two, three hours a week telling him exactly what I'm telling you guys about women <laughs> and it's again it's a, it's a big circle and women do it too nobody's like I don't think anybody's really to blame there's just a lot of confusion and a lot of what the f f why do women do this I'm not necessarily talking about friend zoning I'm talking about those who just completely cut you off for no reason whatsoever or those that uh yeah that clearly like friend zone you but still kind of just take advantage of you and your friendship as if you're like you're like an uncle right or like a, a like a you know a parent parental figure stop with the games stop with the mixed signals um and uh if you are actually looking for a relationship and you're into a guy you gotta talk to him because us us people like guys like me the the good ones we're not going to go out of our way to talk to you because we've already seen it all. We've been hurt and heartbroken and rejected so many times. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, if I like you, I will not talk to you. I will not show it. I will not approach you first. Personally, me, and this speaks for many other guys out there, if we like you, we're not afraid to wait and see how you, how you, what you think of us, how you feel about us. Because we're going to sit there and we're going to watch you and we're going to sniff you out from a distance, of course. And we will wait and watch and listen and see and and uh, from a bird's eye view. So, yeah, we're paying attention to you, but you won't know it. And um, you may think that you're two steps ahead of us, but you're wrong. We're two steps ahead of you. So just keep that in mind. And, um, you know, if you are a female, let's say 20 years or older, and you are into a guy, nothing is going to happen. If, if, if this man wants anything more, if he wants anything more than sex, uh, then he's probably not going to talk to you. So if you are interested in him and you want something special, then you have to approach him. Because in today's day and age, that's the only way it's going to work anymore. First and foremost, I want answers. Why are women like this? Just in general, why are they like this? Why do they treat men like like animals that we just don't have any feelings and that they could just rip out our hearts, tear them in half, and hand them back to us and expect us to just zip it right back up and be okay? You heard it here first, and I am not even sorry for saying anything because I just want it, I want it to be over. I want it this whole roller coaster of good bad and the ugly to be over and future wife i know you're out there i'll find you but um to meet uphill battle so thank you guys once again very much for watching this i do hope you enjoyed it uh that was a mouthful 
<laughs> and I'm out of breath now, but that felt good to get it all off my chest because oh, I'm grinding my teeth like in frustration uh, about oh, a lot of this stuff. And I'm sure there's a lot of females out there that are doing the same thing. It's probably all big, giant, just... So thank you, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, you know what to do. Please like, like, subscribe, comment, email me. It's all there. It's everything you need to know about me or how to contact me is in the channel in some somewhere in some in some way. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this. And as always, I will see you next time. God bless. God bless.